Hi, this is Geert Jan from the NetBeans team. In this screencast, I want to show you how to get started using JRebel to handle dynamic class reloading of your applications. The purpose of this is to speed up development time significantly. To get started, I've installed the official NetBeans plugin for JRebel, created by the Zero Turnaround team. Um, what you would need to do is go to the Plugins Manager and you will find in NetBeans 7.2 and NetBeans 7.2.1 that there is a plugin in this list called JRebel Plugin for NetBeans. And here it is, JRebel NetBeans Plugin. I've installed it. Install it in 7.2.1. This is the version of NetBeans for which this plugin has been written and for which it's been tested. New version will become available once NetBeans 7.3 has been released. But this is the current plugin. I've installed it and I can see it listed JRebel NetBeans plugin. Next, once you've installed the JRebel NetBeans plugin, you will see two buttons in the toolbar, one for enabling or disabling JRebel and the other for remoting. And this is a topic we'll deal with in a future screencast. In the options window, what the plugin has done is provided a new tab. You can see here the JRebel tab. In there, I have registered my license and you can see there are different licensing options. I have a license. I registered it here by browsing for this license that I had downloaded once I had received it. Um, in the Plugins tab, I have selected um, a checkbox for Jersey because in this particular demo, we're going to use the JRebel support for Jersey. And you can see um, JRebel has tailored support for a whole range of different frameworks. Um, in this case, I want to use Jersey, so I've checked it because it was one of the um, frameworks for which there isn't a check mark by default, so it isn't switched on by default. I switched it on. However, there are two small caveats, and the first is um, various things should have happened in the .jrebel uh, folder, and this .jrebel folder is automatically created once you've installed the plugin. You'll find it in your um, home directory, so it's in case of Windows C users and your name followed by .jrebel. In there, once you've um, registered the license file in the options window, you should find the license file in this .jrebel folder. And you should also find um, a properties file in here listing the frameworks that you've enabled. Now, what I had to do manually is put the license file in here because it wasn't copied in here um, via the options window. There's a, a problem on that level with the plugin. And also, you can see there's no properties file in here. So what I had to do instead was go to the domain XML file of my um, Glassfish domain that I'm using or um, the server.xml file of Tomcat or whatever the configuration file is of the um, server that you're using and I had to specify a JVM option. So you can see here hyphen d rebel dot jersey underscore plugin equals true. So this is going to enable the JRebel support um, for Jersey. I've now got the license registered, and now when I start the Glassfish server, what I see, as you can see here, is a message from JRebel. If the licensing was wrong, you would get a different message here saying you don't have the correct license or you don't have a license for JRebel. And what you also see is a list of disabled support for certain frameworks. And by default, I would not see Jersey here. Uh, because I have enabled Jersey, um, this time via the domain.xml file by setting the JVM argument there, um, but normally just via the a check in the checkbox in the um, options window, now Jersey is excluded there, which means that I now have support for Jersey. So these are the first steps you need to take, and you can see that um, the server has started up and is ready to receive my applications that I'm going to deploy to it. Okay, we've set up JRebel, and now we will create an application that makes use of it. A plain Maven-based web application. Click Next, and we'll call it JRebel uh, Sample. Next, Finish. A new plain old Maven-based application is created. Here it is, and it has a JSP page, which we won't really need in this example and we would more likely use facelets in Java E6 anyway. Um, we start by adding a configuration file for JRebel to the project. And why we need this is that this file is used to map the running application back to the workspace so that the resources will be loaded from the mapped directories 
rather than from the deployed artifact. So we choose to generate Rebel XML, and in my case, it tries to generate this into the My Documents folder, which is completely wrong. And the reason for that is that I don't, in my Maven application, have a Resources folder. So I'll create a new um, folder here. So other folder, and the folder will be within Source Main. And here we see it, source, main, and there's resources. And now I also have a new node in my logical view, which means that now when I right click and choose generate Rebel XML, it will be generated into that resources folder. I can see also that this rebel.xml file has been generated. What does it look like? Well, it provides the paths to the, um, for the class paths and for the web route. So any changes that are applied um, in any subfolder of these two folders um, will result in JRebel updating the running application with those changes without redeploying the entire application, which is what NetBeans does by default. So I'm going to switch that off. So here we go. Deploy on save is unchecked. And we have um, Rebel XML to do the redeployment um, configuration for us instead. Okay, so let's begin by creating something to um, do a small smoke test of all of this and we'll use a RESTful web resource for this purpose um, so here's the path so it will be our standard URL from the application slash web resources slash generic and we'll call it hello world service and we'll use jersey and we'll click finish now inside the web XML file the um, Jersey configuration is set up and we're going to make use of JSON um, together with Jersey so you can see here this is Jersey servlet we're going to use JSON as well so I'll add um, a new init param for the Perjo mapping feature to provide that support to um, our um, Jersey support and to that end we type again com.sun.jersey.api.json um, pojo mapping feature okay so now we can use json close everything for the moment and here is our service that we generated and what's inside the service so you can see here the path, generic, um, which is um, appended to web resources. Here you can see web resources, the servlet mapping for the servlet adapter, which is our Jersey uh, servlet container servlet. In here we have one method, get XML. For the moment, let's not use um, XML actually. Let's instead use text plain. I'm going to return a message. Turn a world. And now we're all set. We're going to deploy the application. And at the same time, um, we should see in the Glassfish console that some messages from JRebel should appear telling us that JRebel is monitoring the um, the directories that we've registered via our rebel.xml file. So seeing those messages is actually even more interesting than seeing the deployed application at this stage. Okay, so here our sample is loaded. So we see hello world. Unsurprisingly, this is a message from the index.jsp file. We type web resources and it was generic. Okay, we see a hello world message. Now in the Glassfish console, we see here these messages. Nice and long messages, so you should be able to identify them easily. JRebel is uh, monitoring the classes directory and the web app directory for changes. And um, there is uh, support enabled for um, Jersey. So. Um, so here is our message, uh, hello world, let's go back 
application JSON. Hello, Amsterdam. It's not going to look any different in the browser, um, except well, the text will be different. So this is kind of courier. So this is what you would expect from JSON. And now we're going to make an actual change. Um, so we go back, something slightly more interesting. So we imagine that we have a private class item. Uh, private class item it has an ID and it has a string and a getter and a setter. Enter and setter, and we go back to our method. We're going to now return a list of these, and we're also going to change the path here. So it's going to go to items. We're going to have a list of items. And we're going to have here arrays as list, and it will be a new item. So I made quite some changes to this method now. Um, again, going to return JSON. We return to our browser, and now in addition to generic, we have items. And there we get the result from our changed method. So we have completely changed the method. Um, Changed it, returned something different, and um, the JRebel support enabled that change to be reloaded dynamically. We didn't have to redeploy the application. We made an actual real change to a method, um, to the signature of the method, and the uh, everything worked as we would expect, and we're seeing the result. So with that, you have the basic starting point for um, getting started with JRebel, for configuring it, for setting it up, and you've seen a first smoke test to check that everything works. That's it. Hope you have fun with JRebel, and as you can see, this should really speed up your development time significantly.